Okay, here we see another one of those cattle crawls that are seen across the South or Sub-Saharan Cape area of Africa. Recently did a video about this and it showed that there were thousands of these stone buildings here in circles that were all over the Cape but much more when people are confused as to where they came from or what happened there are the exact same things well they're not exact to each other in fact no two are exactly alike but are built on the same concepts just like stone circles that all the Caucasians built like Stonehenge and so on but these are built in Africa across a huge swath of land but even larger swath of land that people are probably unaware of from ancient Anatolia and Syria all the way across the Black Desert as we call it into ancient Yemen and there are thousands and thousands of them there also making a connection now long ago people figured out that the ones that are up here are those Natufian people and we've made the connection that those Natufian people were the people that came back and migrated around Africa around the Mediterranean actually and then up the Nile but did they just live there well no we know the Sahara was green in ancient times and really turned into a desert again much more recently and during that time it was even much more greener than you see in this picture here there was more than three times the amount of average rainfall all across this area at that time so it would have been a lot more lush forest and things have given away to step and scrublands and so on but where we find these ancient cattle crawls we kind of act confused a little bit about where they might have come from and a lot of people of course want to make claims on them well the claim is the connective that they connect to the ancient Natufians regardless of where you're seeing this at imagine if we found some on the far side of India on the other side of it that looked just very much like this or the same similar building technique which is kind of what's happened Would we be able to still make that same connection? Or in a modern time, due to pandering and all kinds of things, would we try to weasel out of it or act ambiguous? There's no reason for that. For we're all trying to get to the truth and apex and zoom, zoom, and we can't get zoom, zoom no matter what. If we're sitting around and making up lies or being ambiguous, which in a way is a lie. It's a lie of omission. Adam's calendar is the oldest megalithic site in the world. Yeah, we did the video about the cattle crawls, as we want to call them, or stone circles, and who they're attributed to, and I mentioned Adam's calendar. This has something more to do with Adam's calendar and its connections to these. Probably shows a better connection to the things that we're able to show. Why do they call it Adam's calendar? Well, it's got something to do with the Adamic people. It's also got something to do with sun worship and stuff. And they leave it a little vague and make a few statements in here, but I'll try to clarify when I can. Adam's calendar is controversially suggested to be the oldest man-made structure in the world. Perhaps older than Gobekli Tepe and everything if they're looking at this erosion and so on. And trying to work off of it now some of this is speculation sometimes it's referred as the African Stonehenge for a reason and it predates both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid of Giza by tens of thousands of years there's another African Stonehenge that we're well aware of that's much more up towards Egypt that's in Duadel that's there and there's another stone circle that's there. In fact, there are tales that say that there's a pit below that that got filled back up, and then they put the stone circle on top of that, and the devil is inside there somehow. Well, we've gone through a lot of my videos uh, and discussed how that actually came about, and that whole devil idea we have now is really not in play 
in ancient times. It wasn't a yin and yang versus things and a good God and a bad God that are controlling the earth. If you seriously look at it, that's the way that it's portrayed. This is located in Mumpalanga, South Africa, and it's a standing stone circle about 30 meters in diameter, 90 feet or so, and has been estimated by some accounts to be more than 75,000 years old. Various astronomical alignments have been identified at the site, and it's possibly the only example of a completely functional, mostly intact, megalithic stone calendar in the world. I wouldn't say that that's in any way a truthful statement right there. It's a uh, various astronomers have been identified as the site as possibly the only example of a completely functional, mostly intact megalithic stone calendar in the world. I think of Stonehenge. They've already set it in the thing up above it. Um, but we've also seen the stone circles that look very much like this in uh, Proto-Indo-European lands also. And the ones that we found there are on an exact latitude of Earth that so were Woodhenge, Stonehenge, and it itself, and it makes a connection too. In fact, it's got that name Arkham attached to it, and we have attachments modern day where we think of the Arkham Asylum and Batman games, but it doesn't have anything to do with it, or does that name keep coming up for a reason? So, it's still intact, but it's not the only one, of course. And some of the alignments are out of skew. And by looking at the amount of out of skew they are, and using computers, and being able to roll back time, they can figure out at what time it was exactly lined up place we're talking about is up on this escarpment right here overlooking this whole place scattered throughout the mountains of South Africa are thousands of stone circles the first estimates of the number of these ruins were made in 1891 by English explorer Theodore Bent he estimated there are about 4,000 in this area of the world by 1974, the estimate had risen to around 20,000. Today, researcher and authority on the subject, Michael Tellinger, has estimated the number of ancient stone ruins to be 100,000 or possibly more. A lot of people have looked at it and say, well, he is just trying to exaggerate even more to bring people into looking at this and figuring it out, hopefully in his lifetime, because it's a great wonder here. He's a South African man, lived on the Cape, you know, South Africa, and knew about these, went and checked them out and everything, and has done a lot of studies on them and so on, and tried to figure out things, but it took other scientists and other people looking at these and the alignments to come up with the idea of where they align up to totally. One thing that's neat about it is a lot of the Hornfell stones that are there actually ring whenever you chime them. And he's talked about how they're making these sound structures, and a lot of the stones are the same stones. And it's almost like a stone wind chime effect. If you were to knock on these stones, there's a ringing pattern. We've looked at before how whenever you can take and stretch out a skin over a drum, and then not with the drum but near it play a sound that vibration going through the drum makes the skin vibrate and if you put sand upon it pictures start to appear that make pictures of sounds and a lot of people have made connections to that's what these structures are that these people were in harmony or hearing the sound of the universe and so on and they were able to pull it off so some of these stone circles have no doors or entrances, while most are connected by an expansive network of channels that are often misinterpreted as roads by some historians. These connected grid of circular ruins are immersed in a seemingly never-ending expanse of ancient agricultural terraces. Huh? 
and surrounding these structures. Adam's calendar is considered to be the most famous among these ruins. So now we're saying that there's agricultural sites connected to it. When we look at a lot of these, you can see that at a later time, there's a greater place that's built that's more like Great Zimbabwe. Now, even in my mind, that's done a whole, whole lot later than these dates, of course. Whether you want to give them this four to 6,000 B.C. range, 20,000 B.C. range, 10,000 or to 11,500 B.C. keeps coming up in all of our other videos about other civilizations far north and the rapid change that happened after the Younger Dryas event. Well, did it affect the whole world? Well, a lot of these seem to be dating around those times. You're looking here at a scar that runs through the land. Let me use my finger of God here. And it runs through the land and through over here. But it rains occasionally and that becomes a river and then dries right back up. But during that older time, that river was created. Standing water broke out and carved through the land and actually created that river valley that's there. And after that creation of that river valley, these circles show up in the river valley. Right? They surround it and so on. In fact, this is the picture that I showed, but during a different time of the year of that one structure that had the roads that cut through it and zigzag down through it and so on and this connective here where it looks like you might be able to run cattle from here to there and not have to worry about anything that's out on the outside here or them getting out could be looked at a bunch of different ways here's a little cluster looks like a flower with another circle around it and around it smaller version of the same thing so we could say that this is the same type of thing but not the same thing then we find things like this sun symbology that goes on here and this is the same type of thing as this and this and this and this but what are they and what were they used for we'd have to dig a whole lot deeper they've only done a few of the ones up through the black desert in yemen and in doing so they found out that they're connected to the natufians and have artifacts there but they never really fully have excavated a single one of these much less fully excavate an area around here and figure out who connects to this. For one thing's for sure, with the amount of hundreds and thousands of people that are connected with this, there's going to be some skeletons somewhere. And at this time, if they're burying them and not putting them up on deuses and letting the, cow the birds take them to heaven, like we talked about, and then burning the bones or doing whatever, you'll probably find some, a necropolis, if you will. But this real expansive, it's one from Google Earth there, showing a tiny area with these ancient earthworks and stoneworks. Known by African elders as the birthplace of the sun, which has connection to sun symbology and connections, huh? or Izalo Ilanga, the site was first brought to public attention in 2003 by South African pilot Johan Hein. He'd been flying over the mountains of Mpulunga, South Africa, for over 20 years and took his interest in the thousands of strange circular stone objects scattered throughout the region and began photographing them. By the way, at the time, there was no people around that were around these. In fact, when they contacted the people, they said that these were made by the old people and you don't hang around them at night. There's ghosts and all kinds of these ideas and they weren't going to deal with them. Perhaps that's the reason they were still here because a people that were adept at stoneworking at all would be able to take and even though ruin a few buildings, fix all the other ones up to a better state and so on. It might lessen the amount and you'd only get 60 to 80 percent out of it, but bam, they're all built back up the way that they used to be, but that's never happened. In consulting experts on their origins, he was informed that they were uh, remains of cattle crawls, livestock enclosures left behind by the Bantu people when they migrated from north around the 14th century. 
Yeah, the great Bantu expansion. They used to live only over in far west Africa. Didn't know the rest of the world existed, really. Didn't know Egypt existed like they try to claim nowadays. And so on. But whenever they expanded over, they didn't come over and go north, you know, and, and around over into Egypt and so on. They actually came over and hit the Pygmies. And the Khoisan used to be there and actually drove them south due to problems between themselves they still prey on the pygmies today but they're saying that these were built by them in the 14th century it's not true because these people have actually never been noted for stonework and they surely wouldn't have been all of a sudden starting up some kind of stonework and having cattle out of nowhere these cattle or livestock were all brought by Caucasians it's well known for many many years now that all of that Caucasian grains and all the cattle that they had was what came into North Africa and Egypt and so on and then those cattle eventually made their way to these people and the Dinka and other people that are almost cattle worshippers to this day but they did not have it before Botaurus Bo this type of cattle was domesticated out of Africa actually and along with all the grains that even the Egyptians used we know this well today this theory seems far from definitive as the structures are unlike any other Bantu cattle call designs which are usually made of thorny shrubs with a single entrance exit for the cattle there are also several thousands of them spread over tens of thousands of miles so if we got a look there's Loki if we got a look at these cattle crawls that they live in now and they call it a cattle crawl so they can try to make the connection but if you look here this is actually a dwelling and they're not made in the same way not circular with circle or circle around them but just shaped due to the land in a lot of cases and so on like that it makes sense but this even though it looks somewhat like it has no connections first of all it's just built out of fashion shrubbery and stuff these are dwellings that aren't stone working these are a pre-neolithic people to this day i know national geographic doesn't show anymore due to feelings and of course the way that african americans feel nowadays about things but in reality this is still a pretty much pre-neolithic people so you can't attach them to newer stonework <clears throat> the weird thing here is that these stonework circles appear to be Neolithic and they might change the date of Neolithic age much like Gobekli Tepe did where we didn't have it going back to all of a sudden and then bam we find this thing that again looks like Stonehenge but it's even more intricately carved not as gigantic made in a different way one was made to be bam a structure and the other one is an, an elegant thing quite a bit for its time but they're all working off of sacred geometry and they have alignments and things and these cultures here do not have that even though it's been brought to them in a concept they still don't have it at this point so an air crash involving one of these crew brought Johan to discover the mysterious monolithic cliff uh, circles by accident en route to find one of his pilots who had crashed his plane on the edge of the cliff Johan noticed an arrangement of large stones sticking out of the ground next to the crash site. You know, this guy crashed next to that cliff we were looking at with a big gorge next to it. And if he wouldn't have brought it down where he did, he might have gone on the land of the lost. While rescuing the injured pilot down the side of the cliff, Johan walked over to the monoliths and realized that they were aligned to the cardinal points, north, south, east, and west, as well as the equinoxes and solstices. He already had this all figured out. A lot of pilots get into concepts like this so they can work out things during certain times of the year and stuff. Especially bush pilots trying to get an idea where's where and where's home. Where will the sun be whenever it goes to set as opposed to west. These are at least three monoliths aligned towards the sunrise. But on the west side of the aligned monoliths there are a strange hole in the ground. After weeks and monuments of uh, months of measuring the and making observations Johan suspected it was a stone calendar the site is aptly named Adam's calendar because the stones are placed 
to track the movement of the sun and these sun worshiping people which cast shadows on the rock it still works perfectly as a calendar today by following the shadow of the setting sun which is cast by the taller central monolith on the flat stone beside it this remarkable calendar was originally a large circular stone structure resembling Stonehenge and in the center of the circle there are two upright stones very much like Stonehenge and are said to have been carved its original shape is still clearly visible from satellite images. The stones are all dolomite, weighing up to five tons each, and are said to have been transported from a distant site. It also should be noted that the area surrounding Adam's calendar is extremely rich in gold. Several mining shafts have been reported in the area, with one of the richest working mines in the world today being the Sheba gold mine located in Umpalanga. Not only did the rich gold reefs attract attention in the 1880s, but the early evidence of this historic civilization's mining for minerals were described in writings by the early Europeans. Yeah, they talked about that there were actually these gold mines that must have grown back into antiquity, and no one knew how old they actually were. Certain artifacts were found in them, but they couldn't make correlations. There were even ancient arrowheads found in them or ancient types of arrowheads found in them. But there are still a primitive people living in this area that could have lost an arrow in this same area and not be necessarily connected. They, again, didn't do an excavated down through the layers. They're looking around for pottery shards and things on the ground and not really doing an excavation, not really finding how deep this soil has impacted on the ground and built up over time and a lot of these where the actual base of it is in fact and where they can find some charcoal at those bases what dating would be around it here we're looking at that Adam's calendar circa 11,500 BC strangely we keep hitting on that number guys but it shows that there are alignments. Uh, let me grab my pen here. Going from east to west, there are alignments running through here. This is a key point here because there are three stones hooked up with it. And what is that? Well, if I go down a little bit, you realize that that's Orion's belt and the three stars of Orion's belt rising. We know we have well known connections to the Aryan Orion thing that goes on and of course Egypt and their smiting pose of Orion and how it all connects onto this and so this shows you something that may have just predated Egypt by the Natufians in fact in my mind I want to give you a connective of about that 10,500 years probably 12, 14 might reach into 20 here at the most that these people were living here but there's a few other telltale things too. There's a few of these stones that have been broken. And they got broken in such an elder time that they have an erosion and a patina on them that allows you to actually realize, wow, okay, it definitely is not just a few thousand years ago. And this was definitely not made by the Bantu people that had done so in the 1400s there would not be almost any patina at all on the new cracked part there surely wouldn't be much erosion and so on but here there's also a cutting through line of winter winter solstice summer solstice that we're familiar with right other winter solstice summer solstice sunrises and connections here just that concept of alone shows you connections to a lot of stone circles that we know all around the world or the known world of the time and those are all connected to one people who had this knowledge that brought forth agriculture and in fact knowing of the seasons here is what really makes agriculture work correctly to be able to set up and do for things to end up with the outcome that you need to have a calendar almanacs plantings all these things in a modern day are all built off this ancient knowledge which goes way back 
way back. It's another Orion alignment right here in an Orion setting sun. So there are alignments where the Orion's belt would be rising from and setting at as it arcs over the sky. The first calculations of the age of the calendar were made based on the rise of Orion, the constellation known for its three bright stars forming this belt of the mythical hunter. The earth wobbles on its axis, so the stars and constellations change those angles of presentation in the night sky on a cyclical basis. The procession we've talked about. This rotation, called the procession, completes a cycle about every 26,000 years or so, and by determining when the three stars of Orion Belt were positioned flat or horizontal against the horizon, rising together, it is possible to estimate that the time when the three stones in the calendar were in alignment with these stars. According to Tellinger, a calculation done by astronomer Bill Hollenbach based on the rise of Orion suggests an age of the side of it at least 75,000 years. Let me clarify that a little bit. You can see Orion rising at different points all the way through this cyclical pattern. But to have them flat on the horizon and line up to it, it's really going to happen once during this 26,000 cyclical period, and then again once, again exactly at that cyclical period. So you'd have to strangely be able to pull off about three of them back before the wobble would align with the point that it should. So the Earth's got this little thing where it wobbles like this and the alignments and when they come up and whenever it's lean back, whenever the Earth's ball is lean back, when they come up, they're going to actually be, because it's not north, south, east, west, they're going to be at a different arc point along that. And so they don't line up. They only line up about three times in this 75,000 years, and it seems like the third oldest one, not the one we just went through, is the one that connects to it. A further calculation done in June 2009 suggests an age of at least 160,000 years based on the rise of Orion flat on the horizon of the marker stones. but also on the erosion of dolerite stones. Dolerite's an extremely hard stone. Later, the Egyptians and Sumerians are using this, making statues out of it. To, the, to this day, it's an example of their prowess because we're led to believe that they were beating rocks on rocks, pulling this off, and might have had copper, bronze that's not around yet, and all these things, and you're like, yeah, there's no way. Seriously. There's more involved. And these people didn't pop up like popcorn either. They can't just start out of nowhere and ta-da. It doesn't work that way. But you can have a rapid acceleration once this concept is made. And then people get better at it. You can see that recreating itself in the Renaissance. But... Some of the pieces of the marker stones that have been broken off and set on the ground exposed to natural erosion. But when these pieces were put back together, there was about three centimeters of stone that had already been worn away. This calculation helped assess the age of the site by calculating the erosion rate of the dolomite, or dolerite. So, one of these stones, which has an incredible patina and lichen and everything all over it, and looks a lot like the blue stone somewhat. And you can see Tellinger leaning over and looking at this alignment of the three stones. But they found ones that were broken, and then there's this piece on the ground here. And somebody said, oh, wow, you know, that used to go right on top of here. But when they tried to put it back on there, it don't line up right. There's been erosion here and on here to the point that it's all smoothed off on that part and it's missing three centimeters worth of erosion. Well, how long does it take to get three centimeters of erosion on something like this dolomite? 
and working off that they're saying well it's not double the amount of time of 75,000 but it's about a hundred yeah no it's a little more than that could be as much as 160,000 years and that's giving the idea that it's not as rainy today but I'm gonna give it the rains down in Africa constantly onto it and how long would it take to erode that now What's weird is whenever they use these scales, by the way, it's actually not true and valid. They say, well, if it rained the best, it has been raining ever since. Da, 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 da. So how long would it take? And they give them a number and they go, oh, so it could be that old. And so they try to minimize it when the fact is, well, it hasn't been raining like that all these times. Then again, I only want to give this back 10 to 20,000 years. And I believe that whenever Orion lifted up that they didn't have to lift up from the thing perfectly like this that they could have been lifting up one two three and it would have been just fine what does that date put it at well it's uh, 11,500 that might be more appropriate or correct just like whenever you look at this picture here and he's looking at the alignment and they're telling you down here, Mike Intelliger is testing the sound acoustics of the site. He doesn't have the sound meter thing on to him and whenever they're doing the sound acoustics, they ring the little bell and then catch the echoes back off of stuff and try to see how it's putting sound around onto it. But it doesn't really work when there's no walls. You need that reverberation. And when you get in those cattle crawl type things, you can set person certain tones and you get certain tones back. This is like old Alpine car stereos where you could hit a button and it, and it would say, well, if your speakers are all here, it would put out this clip tone and it would record itself and it would try to figure out, well, if, you're, if your bounce is like this, then your speakers should be about like that and it set itself. Well, in that setting itself of this idea of these circles, it's more like a tone it's like there are certain tones when you get in the Great Pyramid that really reverberate. I've showed in a few videos. So this sound could have something to do with it because if you look at these sound patterns, they make these patterns that look a lot like it. Could be that they did this thing and made these sounds and then tried to recreate it on the ground. Why are they doing all this? Well, at this time, these elfin type people were really in tune with nature and they were bonding heaven to earth in a concept that led to the religions we have today. But he's sitting here with his hand up looking and sighting this right across here. I don't think he's even listening for sound. The latest and most interesting discovery of the stone circles in Adam's calendar is the sound frequencies of the rock formations from the earth below them. With modern technology, Tellinger and scientists have been able to detect and measure sound frequencies with acoustic properties made from the earth inside the circles which conduct electricity. Yeah, it starts to get weird and odd here, but these sound frequencies of the earth under the stones are shaped as flowers of sacred geometry as they surface to the ground. So now we almost have this crop circle, stone circle concept idea, and this hum of the earth, and that these people somehow could detect it back then, and where it lined up right, they built one of these th circles for it and civilization around it to do things, to catch the hum of the earth, the cycles. There's still much about Adam's calendars yet to be understood, including who built them, with what their civilization was like and how they constructed with such precise measurements. Well, it's the Natufian people, it looks like. You might try to say they adopted in others and so on, but uh, we can see after that fact that... Uh, None of the people that they associated, Khoisan down in the area now, or Bantus or whatever, really done any Neolithic stonework. So it can't be connected to them in any way. In fact, there is that Natufian sites that are running through Syria, Yemen, and everywhere. Well, how far did those people go? Well, we knew they were part of ancient Egypt and around uh, the Mediterranean and North Africa. Well, how far did it go? I'd like to believe that if we got to take a vacuum cleaner to that sand that's out there in the desert that way out there in the desert you would find some of these cattle crawls that are there that the pre-proto-egyptians would have been well aware of 
that dried away to where some were around oasises and so on and then psh, people never went again. Perhaps in time more research will piece together this prehistoric mystery. So, well, I think we've still got the major portion of the pieces of what it could be or what it should be expected to be. And I think archaeology doesn't want to check into this because it would be far more revealing. You can imagine in ancient times, not too many generations before now, they didn't want to hear anything that wasn't fitting with the Bible idea because that was ruining it for them. Dinosaurs and things were really ruining things for people. The fact that they heard about floods all around the world and got real excited but then found out they were all happening at different times and not everywhere was ruining things for them. Only because they had expectations in their mind what that book said meant what they think that it meant versus the esoteric knowledge that really it came from in the first place. Like, share, subscribe, and enjoy, and we'll get on to some more of this revealing knowledge. But these stone circles that have these alignments like this are known everywhere, and if we weren't exactly at the point we were talking about this on the planet, there would be no question who it's attached to, is it? Well, can we make the stone circle here, stone circle there connection? Peace.